Welcome to the shop. We're going to start off by center drilling this piece of titanium brown bar and then proceed with a quarter inch drill. This is a father daughter project. My daughter wanted to make some titanium rims, and so here we are. I don't have coolant set up on my lathe, so my daughter went and picked up a spray bottle and we mix up some coolant. We did use an infrared thermometer just to see and the temperature that we could record never went up above 60 degrees C. We used drilling operations to remove the bulk of the material. The mesh that you see uh, sitting above the ways is a stainless steel mesh and we decided to use that uh, to collect all the chips that were falling down and remove them from the danger zone, so to speak, uh, continuously instead of allowing things to accumulate and create a fire hazard. We went once again with the drill, uh, drill bit and really that was about it for this particular drill bit. It is not long for this world and pretty much after this it was totally done for. Next we switched over to boring bar and my daughter ran that in. Next we go ahead and make a little groove on the inside and kind of try to chamfer the inside and see if that would help and perhaps it would also help with the parting so we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Next she measures out the ID. Uh, she's using a caliper and this is obviously not the most exact way to do it um, but it is so for a ring. Measured value of X is 38.12. So press the X key and type in 38.12 and then enter. The measurements have been entered into the DRO. She was also not sure of the sizes she needed for the rings. Now she's turning the OD down to the desired size. Uh, 36.54? Yes. We had set up the micrometer stop earlier and I'm just telling her not to worry about the carriage because it will stop and she can wind it back up. Point eight eight. 
next some cleaning up and chamfering. Not always easy to know which way the cross slide is going to move when you turn the dials. <laughs> Two so, rings in one. While she was gone running some errands, I thought I would go ahead and make a mandrel. Here I'm turning down a neck that will allow for expansion of the mandrel, um, which you'll see later on. Just using a parting tool to quickly remove the material. And then just getting some rough ideas of the dimensions needed. This is a spotting drill which should leave a nice chamfer at the end of it as well. And here's parting off the mandrel with the help of a screwdriver. Now this is what the mandrel looks like after using a portable bandsaw to cut the slits. This is a holder I had made earlier for securing the mandrel. As you can see it's got two tapered ends that go in and then as you tighten the bolt it will uh, squeeze the mandrel and expand it.
Next we decided to chamfering on the outside. We held the ring with the three jaw chuck and used a mooring bar and the compound to create the chamfer. Now for the next ring and back on the mandrel, doing the outside chamfers at this time. We had visually centered the ring on the tip of the insert and then the goal was to cut an equal chamfer on either side. Should I stay there? Yeah, stay there and go to the same depth as you did. So, as it turns out, we were not exactly symmetrical about the center line of the ring. And I went ahead and removed a little bit of extra material. Ooh! Nice? Yeah. All right. That's good enough. Let's not mess with it too much more. Mm -hmm. It'll disappear. And here we are, the final result. Three rings, uh, each with decreasing IDs by about half a millimeter each, and different widths, but a um, bit random, but you know, not too bad for a first attempt. And if you enjoyed this video, do please be sure to share, subscribe, and like. Thank you for watching.